This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey, what's up guys? Christian here for Chris Garp. Welcome to 2019. Super excited for this year. There's a lot of really huge things happening, a lot of projects in the works. But for today, we are going to break down and talk about my latest collaboration with Inanna and the short film, Follow Me. Let's talk about Follow Me. This was a really interesting project because it honestly was just kind of like the old way of filming where we would just go and do it and shoot it in very guerrilla style because uh, we didn't really have any permits. A lot of the locations were borrowed from friends and most of the, the main sequences were actually shot in a mall which costs probably tens of thousands of dollars to rent for one day. So we obviously didn't want to do that and we nearly got kicked out and there was a few situations where I was like, we're pushing it. But no, the point is sometimes you just have to make it work. Despite of all that, I think we got a, a really good amount of coverage to tell our story and that's the most important part. Oh, did you just drop your lens? <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then a lot of the other locations were literally pulling favors. And surprisingly, honestly, sometimes uh, this works, especially with uh, small business owners. If it's a big chain, of course, there's limitations because they have to get corporate approval and go through a bunch of ranks. But if you find a local shop, a local cafe, a lot of times they're just gonna be cool about it as long as you give a special thanks or if you've mentioned them somewhere. You know, just over here, really so taking myself seriously. <laughs> but because of that, I made sure that we were super respectful and that we were in and out quick without, you know, having cables or stuff around. We were very compact uh, so that we wouldn't, you know, bother their business at all. I'm a strong believer that if you have a story to tell, do whatever you can, obviously be safe, obviously be respectful, but you know, Try to, try to play the game a little bit. So from there, I just wanna talk a little bit about the lighting. Most of the times I find myself using just three lights. I have my 120D with the Aperture Dome, and then I have the Tri-8 from Aperture as well. And then whenever I need highlights or just kind of a little bit of fill here and there, I use the Ice Light 2s. The 120D with the dome is a really nice soft key. That's what I'm using right now. You're seeing it in action. It's on full blast on my face. It just wraps around nicely. And then usually what I do is I, I try to sneak in a kicker wherever it makes sense wherever there's like practicals that can motivate it and I'm doing that right now too with the tri-8 in the back with the blue gel I also did that for the kitchen scenes but I use the 120d without the dome attachment so I just kind of use it as a spotlight to uh, do a bit of a backlight in uh, in this scene right here because this was falling a little bit flat and there was a window back there so I just wanted to augment that and to kick a little bit more light in the back of our character's head so we have a little bit more of dimension and in this scene, we actually even had a 300D, which was so great to have because I put it literally outside the window and I augmented the sun coming in. And yeah, that's pretty much the lighting. I really kept it flexible. Usually whenever I'm lighting, something that helps is just uh, having stand-ins. If you don't have a stand-in, use your fist, you know, just kind of look at where the light is bouncing. Here I can see that I have my kicker kind of illuminating this side. I have my key here. It's not a face, it's not perfect, but you know, if you're lighting, sometimes this could be a good point of reference and then do minor tweaks from there, but at least you know the direction of how everything is wrapping. Guys, what's up? I do feel kind of like a 90s rap song. Pops. Another key thing is to make sure that you're not getting any really harsh shadows. Sometimes if you have some overhead lights or anything like that, you can cast some really nasty shadows here or maybe from the nose if it's more of a directional light. So those are things to keep in mind whenever you might wanna just bounce that light back from the other side to fill in a little bit of those shadows or to throw something in like the ice light too, especially in the close-ups where you can just sneak it right off a frame and that can help a lot with filling that up a little bit. Okay, so before moving on to the editing, I just wanna to talk to you about our sponsor for today's video because 
this is such a great platform if you want to expand on knowledge and even expand on some of the points that we've been touching on in this video. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And I really love this platform because whenever I feel interested in a specific topic, most of the time they have an entire course dedicated to that one thing. So I can really expand on my knowledge in there and really dive into some topics that really interest me. And as you're seeing here, we just selected filmmaking and just the amount of content on that category alone is just insane. So there's really a lot for anyone in any topic. And guys, you're gonna wanna be quick because the first 500 people that click the link in the description will receive a two month free trial for Skillshare Premium. So I really encourage you guys to check it out. Just take a look at the courses at least and start diving in to some good knowledge. All right, let's talk editing. I might have overdone it a little bit with the smoke in my room, but um, it looks cool. So this video, as I said, was very run and gun and that transferred over to the editing as well because a lot of these parts could otherwise feel very disjointed. It is possible. I mean, I think it worked out in this project. It was definitely a challenge. Okay, so here we go. This is my timeline. This is my main sequence where I laid out all of the scenes that made up the entire short film. So you can see that it's not the actual clips, but rather a bunch of nested sequences that contain each scene or each section of the project. Because especially when you're collaborating with someone, especially someone like Inanna that knows exactly what she wants and she wants to really fine tune it until it gets there, you want to make sure that you can move scenes around, you can squeeze them down or, or just kind of experiment and have room for that. So having that set up in this way allowed me to quickly go different changes. And this applies whenever you're doing any client work. Whenever you can find a way to section things off and make things easier for yourself when it comes to changing them later on, do that. Always set yourself up for success so that happens in your timeline and how you're organizing things within Premiere. All right, so now that we took a sneak peek at my timeline, I wanna show you a few little tricks here and there that kind of uh, made up for a low budget and for run and gun uh, shooting. So in this first shot, we had a jib to give us this top down look and I had no room to put lights because the lens was super wide from above, literally capturing pretty much the entire scene. So I just stuck one in a corner and I knew that this was gonna be a static shot as far as my wide. So I knew that I could easily paint things out later. So here you can see, I just pretty much created an overlay in Photoshop with a transparent background of just that corner of the room. Then after that, I added an adjustment layer with Lumetri Color to make some adjustments such as adding a LUT. My next layer was actually a solid color of a slightly bluish tint and I just added that to sort of add a little bit of ambience around the corner so that we can introduce a little bit of color and, and decrease a little bit of the contrast that leads our eyes onto the middle here. Then I added another adjustment layer which has a mask applied to it that kind of goes around this beam of light that is a practical beam of light coming in from a 300D. But in here, I just added a little bit of glow so that some of that warmth of that light spreads more into the room. And finally, I have another adjustment layer with some of my final tweaks, such as, you know, decreasing the saturation and bringing down a little bit of those highlights. And then finally, just the crop bars on top. Every time I was making sort of these hidden VFX tricks in my shots, was thinking, what is it going to actually take to do this later on? Because it's so easy to say, oh, we'll just fix it later. We'll do this later. But then it gets to editing and then you're like, how am I going to do all these effects? which was kind of my case here. But if you are on set and you're thinking of these tricks, make sure you're thinking about the steps that you'll take in post-production to know if this is something feasible or not, or if it's worth your time, or if it's maybe just worth finding a different angle or a different positioning for that light. And whether you're in tight spaces or you're just trying to fit some lights into your scene, sometimes we don't have really powerful lights, especially if you're working with LEDs. So sneaking them into your scene closer to your subject, knowing that later you can mask that out can help you get some pretty nice shots. Are they gonna call the police with all the smoke? Because I'm afraid if I open a window, all the smoke is gonna come out and it just looks like my apartment's on fire. Now, let me give you another little secret that I used in this project. 
we had a lot of audio issues. We had missing audio clips. We just sometimes didn't have the audio person with us. Capturing good audio on set, especially on dialogue, is probably one of the most important things that you can do for your project. But fortunately, I have a tool that I wanna show you guys that has absolutely saved me on this project and honestly on many other projects that I'm doing currently. And this is the Era Bundle. And these are essentially one knob effects that you can throw onto your clips, onto your sequences to clean up the audio. And that's something I love, especially in this situation where I had so much to repair, so much to go through in very little time. It was super easy to just drop those in and honestly, sometimes not even tweaking them that much because they were already doing such a great job and they do exactly what they're named. So we have a de a noise remover, a plosive remover, a reverb remover, a voice leveler, and all of these you can combine and you can really take your audio to the next level, even if you're not using the best equipment, which was sometimes our case. A lot of the times I had to repair in-camera audio from an A7S body to fit it with a shotgun mic. We're just gonna take this photo. Yeah, okay. Cause we're all besties. What, do you want me to leave or something? Yes. We're just gonna take this photo. Yeah. Okay. Cause we're all besties. What, do you want me to leave or something? Yes. We're just gonna take this photo. Yeah. Okay. Cause we're all besties. What, do you want me to leave or something? Yes. And obviously it's not perfect. It's always better to just have the real thing there, the real shotgun mic. But considering that that's the only thing that we had, we got it to a really acceptable and pretty good uh, place thanks to these plugins and before using these plugins it would have been really hard next to impossible for me to go through all these clips and really spend time with all of the different settings all the different parameters until I got it just right so I think you guys will also like these plugins they're super easy to use and it's just a really really simple way to clean up your audio so I'll leave a link to them in the description as well all right and I think that's pretty much it that I wanted to show you guys uh, a lot of the other stuff that you see in this time and a lot of the other tricks that I've done to it are things that I've covered before and if you are interested more about editing and, and how to make edits flow and make them clean and professional, definitely check out my editing workshop series since it literally covers everything I know. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to reply as soon as I can, especially in the first few days of the video. I try to be as active as possible and answer all your questions. So yeah, that was the timeline of Follow Me. Guys, definitely make sure to subscribe to not miss out on what's coming up because there is a huge collaboration coming up, some really big projects that I can't wait to share with you. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Carr, and I will see you next time.